Um, hello, everybody, and um, uh, welcome to to Kangaroo English. Uh, my name is Christian, and today is Wednesday, the the best day of the week. <laughs> um, it's it's been a while since we uh, since we spoke. Um, I have been uh, super busy with with work. Uh, I've been super busy with uh, with learning and teaching and all of the things that I love to do. Um, but I am um, I'm very happy to be to be back today and very happy to to see you all. Um, so because this is my my first uh, live stream in in uh, I think more than two years. Uh, I really don't know what to expect today, um, but I hope that we can. Um, I hope that we can. Uh, I can. I hope I can answer some of your questions. I hope I can um, uh, learn something myself today, um, and uh, and yeah, I hope it's it's uh, the beginning of a beautiful new thing. Right. Um, so um, basically, I wanted to uh, to start just just by asking anybody if they had any questions that they would like me to to answer, uh, because that's why I'm here. Okay, I'm here today to answer your questions about um, grammar, vocabulary, usage. Um, any any questions you have about about the English language, I'm here to help. So um, if uh, if there's anything you want to ask, please ask in the in the comments, and I'll try to answer your question if if I can. <laughs> if I can. Um, so yeah, we have. Um, uh, people here from uh, Bangladesh, Colombia, Italy, um, Greece. Um, uh, yeah, super, super amazing to to see you all here. Yes, it, it has it has definitely been too long. So um, let's uh, let's let's make this the beginning of a, of a beautiful. Um, uh, a beautiful <laughs> friendship. <laughs> um, so, uh, Marek, uh, Marek's first question was basically, uh, why is there something rather than nothing? <laughs> Oof. Okay, that is, uh, that is part of a category of questions that I am not qualified to, to answer. Um, uh, I suppose that if there was uh, if there was nothing, then you wouldn't be here to to ask that question. So, um, uh, 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 we have uh, yeah people from Peru, Brazil, uh, Ukraine, Mexico. Uh, uh, I um. Uh, in, in my academy, there are many Ukrainians, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's amazing to be to be here with you all. Uh, so so welcome. Um, uh, yeah. So as I said, um, I'm here to um, uh, I'm here to answer your your English questions today. So um, if you have any any questions, please ask. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, in in the chat, I noticed that Bilal has said that um, he he wants to know uh, how to find somebody to speak English with. Um, well, um, I think that w we are we are really very lucky to live in really the best time in history to learn a language, but especially English, right? Um, there are literally 
more than a billion people who speak English at some level, right? Um, and uh, so that, that means that um, English in the history of, of, the, of the world and therefore in the history of the universe, um, English is without a doubt the, the best documented and understood and explained language um, in the history of, of the universe. Um, so if you're learning English, you are extremely lucky. Um, I, can, I can tell you from personal experience that even a really big language like Arabic, um, which again is spoken by hundreds of millions of people, the resources for learning Arabic are really bad. And there's not many of them. So if you're learning English, uh, you're, you're in a very lucky position. Um, and I think really um, the opportunities to find somebody to speak with are only limited by your imagination. Uh, I have personally seen some pretty interesting um, techniques used to find practice partners, people who um, just um, joined uh, joined communities of um, things that they were interested in, like in English on the internet, people who gave free tours of their city to tourists in, in English, um, uh, people who phoned customer service helplines uh, just to have conversations in English with customer service people. Um, they are some, some creative ideas, right? But um, obviously also there are many, many free websites where you can find conversation partners as well. Um, so yeah, I think um, there's not really many excuses for not being able to find somebody to speak English with. You will only have a problem if you only want to speak to native speakers. Then, then you will um, have more difficulty. But I think that's something that you should really think about, really reflect on, is that, you know, English is truly, truly a, a global language. And the idea of, of the native speaker really is dead. Okay, it's a dead concept. Um, and in reality, you are going to be using your English in international contexts, okay, with people that are also non-native speakers like you. And if you have this little idea in the back of your mind that you can only learn English with native speakers, um, you should work really hard to eliminate that idea because it doesn't reflect the reality of, of, of the modern world. Um, and in fact, focusing only on native speakers can put you at a really big disadvantage because it means that um, you will not have the, the necessary practice with other accents, um, with um, other, you know, other, with, well, with international contexts. Um, so I, I think actually it's, it's, uh, it's something that does harm. To, to be obsessed with native speakers, okay? So um, now I'm going to look to see if we have some other questions here, okay? Um, <laughs> so there's a question here from uh, Prameshwar, and he says, uh, Hi, Christian. How does our ways of speaking the language change? I mean, when I encounter a foreigner... I speak in my normal English. But as soon as an Aussie shows up, 
my speaking automatically changes to, to Oz. Um, well, um, how does it work? Um, this really isn't anything to do with language. Okay, this is to do with who uses language, and that is us, right? Humans. And we are social animals. We have known this for thousands of years, okay, that we are social animals. Um, and so the same way that we change our clothes depending on our environment could be uh, a work environment, uh, a relaxing environment, or it could be the environment of traveling in a different country. You know, we change our, our clothes. Um, and also the way we behave, okay, physically, the way we behave. And we do exactly the same thing with our language. Our language is just um, the most the most obvious way that we that we are social. No, because we use language to to socialize, and it's totally natural, of course, that you adapt your language. In fact, adapting and changing your language is a sign that you are a really good language user. People who can't adapt their language generally are not very successful at communication, okay? Especially modern global communication in, in English. So adapting and changing, you, you should consider that a good thing and you should, um, you should try and do it, make it Make it something that is a skill for you to be able to communicate in this way and also that way. Um, great leaders do it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, politicians are famous for being able to change the way they um, they talk depending on whether they're talking to you know a mother with a baby or. Uh, truck driver right <laughs> right um it's a very important skill um and, and i think the 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 easiest way the easiest way to to remember this is the expression which is you talk like who you talk with okay so um you are going to to talk english in the same way as the people that you talk with, okay? That's, that's why um, babies who are born in um, uh, Argentina don't grow up speaking uh, Cantonese. <laughs> that would be strange, right? <laughs> um, uh, okay, um, let's have a look and see if, um, if, there's, uh, if there's any other questions here. Um, uh, okay, uh, 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 let's have a look. Um, uh, okay, um, uh, Floppy or Floppy in, in Australia has the question, which is, um, Christian, which tips do you have to improve listening skills? Um, okay, that, that's a great question. Um, uh, <laughs> If, if you look on my YouTube channel from maybe like five years ago, I made a video about how to prepare for the listening part of the, um, the IELTS exam, I think, okay? And at the beginning of the video, I said that Nobody can teach you listening, okay? I said, nobody can teach you listening. Um, not even the best teacher in the world can teach you listening. Listening is a skill that you develop from practice. I was, I was very confident about this, but I was completely wrong. <laughs> really, really wrong. Um, Listening, just like any other skill, is a skill that, yes, you can uh, 
uh, focus on and and you can practice. And um, uh, actually, um, on my website there is there is a complete listening course, okay, with uh, like twenty seven lessons about how to listen better. Um, but I can give you some um, some general uh, some general tips, okay. Um, so um, I think the 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 first my my first and probably my biggest tip about about learning to listen better is that the idea is that you don't really need to hear every single word to understand well okay and i think often what can happen is that um when you're listening especially if you have a lower level of english and you're just learning okay you're just you're just starting to understand speaking or um even you're starting to watch films or series um um you you maybe in your mind you have this idea that you need to understand everything right all of the words um but uh, often often that that strategy is is not good because um it's it's too difficult okay especially at the beginning too difficult to try and understand everything okay so you can be smart about how you listen and what you want to do is you want to focus on the important content words okay the words that really carry a lot of meaning okay and one way that you can do that immediately which is very simple is to actually watch people's body language okay because there's been lots of research that shows that people use their bodies to emphasize the important words when they speak okay and if you if you uh, watch me you will notice <laughs> that i actually use my hands and my head to emphasize those important words okay <laughs> and so what you can do is you can watch people and you can only concentrate your listening when people use their bodies to indicate the important words do you, do you see i hope you can see how this is working right that that my hands are giving you an idea of the important words so you can follow my body language right um and the opposite to that okay so that that's one easy thing you can do okay is focus on the the body language and of course the opposite is you can actually practice listening or you can practice hearing i should say you can practice hearing all of the words that we actually eat when when we are speaking english okay let me let me give you um a little example here so um notepad okay here we go so um um uh uh, uh uh okay in fact i'm going to take away this contraction okay i have been to the shop now um it's it's totally natural totally natural that when you are um first learning a language you are learning you are <laughs> I don't know a nice way to say this um but generally you start by learning a a version or a form of the language 
that that most people who have a high level of English, most people don't use that form of the language. Okay? And that's that's problematic, right? That's why a lot of times students who spend all of their time learning about rules, um, especially from especially from materials that don't actually reflect how people use English in, in reality, okay? Unfortunately, a lot of learning materials, um, they, they do not reflect the reality of English in the real world, okay? So, it's natural that when you first start, you learn a version of, the Engli of English that people don't really use, okay? Um, and so, maybe in class, I, you know, I hear, I have been to the shop, okay? Um, but in reality, of course, when people are speaking, they're going to use the contraction. And also, these, these, these little connecting words, these little connecting words, unfortunately, generally are eaten by people who who have a higher level of English, okay? Um, and part of the reason is because, you know, as the opposite to when I use my hands, right? Those those little words don't carry they don't carry a lot of meaning. They carry some meaning, but not a lot. So we we kind of contract them and eat them, okay? But what you can do is you can actually practice listening to them. So, um, unfortunately, this um, VE, okay, this VE, um, which in theory, which in theory is um, a very strong kind of voiced sound like, right where so we're producing this vibration in the throat um, unfortunately that can often be reduced to uh, something which might sound just like uh, like a kind of F sound okay so it's much softer much much softer like a f okay and it can be this little f can be so fast and so low in volume, okay? Such, such low emphasis, it's very difficult to hear. Um, and the same with, um, you know, with this, okay? Um, the first thing you might notice is that the, the sound becomes more like uh, a, like an a. Depends, depends on the variety of English, but in general, it might be reduced to some kind of uh, 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 kind of sound. So in your mind, if you are expecting to hear a very beautiful ooh sound, you're expecting to hear too, and suddenly you hear a t. Okay, you're, you're, we have a, we have a problem. Because the reality does not match your, your expectations. And the same with, with this. Maybe in your mind, you're expecting a kind of the sound. Okay? But actually, it sounds more like a the. And, and uh, then they get joined together to become one word, which is like tother. Tother. Okay? Tother. And then the next level, of course, is because the th sound, th, physically it's a lot of work for me, right? I have to, I have to stick out my tongue like, all right, like this. It's, it's hard work. And in the middle of a sentence for me to be, right, it's hard. So... Again, 
really depends on the variety of English, depends who's speaking, but often it will become a sound more like a d kind of sound, right? Um, so if we, if we um, you know, combine, combine these, uh, these, these little, we could say these little uh, changes to the sentence, Okay, instead of having this very clear I've and to the shop, we have something which is more like I've been to the shop or I've been to the shop. Okay, and I can use my hands to, to emphasize the important words. Okay, I've been to the shop. So you can catch the been and the shop. Okay. I've been to the shop, or with the head, you know, I've been to the shop, okay? But what about those, those other words that maybe they're not so important, but they are very important to understanding the sentence? Well, what you can do is you can actually practice learning to hear those little f and uh and d sounds, okay? And... Of course, it's um, part of the, 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 the way to practice this is deliberate practice, right? Where you have some audio and you have a transcript, okay? This is very easy to find. You can find many, many videos, films, videos on YouTube, films, podcasts with transcripts, with really good transcripts. And you can listen and you find those little, those little words, those little um, function words like t, the, v, of, prepositions. You find them and you learn, you learn to catch them. Okay, it's a skill you can, you can practice, definitely. Um, so um, they're kind of, I suppose, my top two tips about improving your listening um, and uh, there's something that you can do for free and fairly quickly okay um, so uh, I hope that's helpful and obviously if you want like lots and lots of detail about this then you should um, then you should uh, do the listening course on my on my website but I, I hope that was I hope that was useful for you um, uh, okay, um, uh, Marcos has asked a question here, which is, um, why should we not say that I was thinking, but I was wondering what's the difference? Okay. So let's, uh, let's put these words on the board, thinking and wondering. Okay. Um, <laughs> I suppose my, my first question to you is, um, did, did somebody tell you that you shouldn't say that? Uh, did somebody tell you that you shouldn't say, I'm thinking? Because obviously both of them are, are correct. Um, they're just different things. They're completely different things. Um, um, as a general... <laughs> As a general rule, okay, and this again, again, please be careful with, with what I'm saying, but as a general rule, um, if people tell you to not say something, they're probably completely wrong about that. <laughs> you know, people, uh, I have seen so much content with things like, don't say this word and native speakers never say that and normally it's just complete fabrication uh, I think mainly for mainly for clicks and views uh, but obviously it's it, it does a lot of damage okay a lot of damage um, so firstly <laughs> if if someone warns you not to use a word a, a word like thinking, which obviously people use every day, um, 
you, you, should, you should be skeptical. You should think, hmm, maybe this is not good advice from a, from a person. Um, uh, so yeah, okay, the difference. Um, uh, thinking, thinking. Uh, I, first, first, I'm going to just give my, my, my instinct kind of definition, okay? So thinking is, um, you know, something which is when we are trying to solve some kind of problem, okay? That's thinking. So we're thinking about what to eat for dinner tonight. We're thinking about um, uh, how, to <laughs> how to fix the grammar of that English sentence, okay? We're, we're using our mental power to, um, to, 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 to find a solution to a problem. Whereas I think wondering Okay, wondering is more rhetorical. What does that mean? It means that probably um, we do not know how to, to solve this problem. We, maybe we don't have enough information, okay? Or we, um, or also maybe we are... Um, Asking ourselves, you know, to, um, uh, we're asking ourselves to, to, to use, uh, you know, <laughs> this, <laughs> oh my God, this, this is the reason why dictionaries exist, okay? Because if, if you are in my academy, you know that I have this problem every single day. Actually, um, defining a word is so hard. It's so hard. And that's why um, lexicographers, the people who, um, who, who write dictionary entries, they can spend weeks and weeks to define one word. Okay? Um, so that's why... A dictionary is always a great place to um, to look for a definition. Okay, so let's have a look at the definition of thinking. Thinking. Okay, thinking is to use your mind to consider something. Okay, and what about wondering? <gasps> wondering. Um, wondering is when you want to know something or you're trying to understand the reason. Yeah, that's a great definition. It's, it's almost as if there were some experts involved in this <laughs> definition. Yeah, so, okay, so thinking is about using your mind to, to, to solve a problem and wondering is about wanting to know information or like trying to, to understand the reason. Um, so I hope that helps. I mean, um, I hope also I'm demonstrating that, um, that, you know, as a teacher, uh, I don't know everything and don't be afraid to, to use resources like dictionaries and, um, all of the amazing resources that are available to, uh, to, to find out this information, okay? Um, okay, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look what else we have here. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, Ricardo is asking um, about the present perfect. Um, he wants me to speak about the present perfect. Um, present perfect is a super big subject, okay? So maybe, um, maybe Ricardo, you could be more specific about what you want to know, okay? And I will try and, um, I'll try and answer your question. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, where am I? Uh, where am I? Uh, I am, I am at home. This is, this is my, my office at home. Um, I have been working at home 
for um, for a long time um, since COVID, right? So, um, so yes, this is my uh, my office, and yes, I still live in Spain. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, George uh, George has written that um, what he wants is to speak with confidence, to not be shy, to have no fear. <laughs> ah, um, sure. I mean, uh, I think I think it's I think it's something that that everybody wants, right? Really. Um, I think something that you should you should remember, okay, is that often, often, confidence, shyness, extrovert, introvert, all of these these things, um, often they are not questions of language, okay? They're not really about language. There are many people. If you, if you reflect on this for a moment, okay, I'm sure that you know many, many people who are native speakers of some language, who have perfect language, right, and who are shy and timid and hate speaking in groups. The idea of giving a presentation would make them sweat and, you know, right? So it's not a language question. Um, one, it's about personality, of course. You know, we are we are all different. Um, we have different ways of of being. Okay, and of course, the se the second thing is is practice. Absolutely, practice. Um, um, uh, for example, just from personal experience. Um, uh, I, I know a student who, about six months ago, whenever she had to speak um, in front of in front of a group of people, she would literally start sweating. Okay, uh, like every part of her body was sweating, um, and she did it every day, sweating every day. Okay, <laughs> um, and what happened? Well, over time, over time, this, this, these feelings of anxiety and and um, the, the the embarrassment, all of these, they slowly, slowly disappear. Um, but there's there's no magic cure. Okay, there's no magic cure. It's just um, it's just practice. Okay, um, you can. You can, you can actively try to change your, your mindset, no? You can try to um, tell yourself that, you know, um, I don't care about my accent or I don't care about my, my grammar mistakes, etc., etc. That's, that's useful, okay? It's, it's helpful to tell yourself that. And it's helpful to be around people who, who make you feel confident and who share that same philosophy, right? Um, that's really important. Um, but it takes time. It takes time. And please, please don't expect <laughs> that um, if you are very shy and, um, you know, um, and timid in, in, in one language, that you will be a completely different person in another language. Um, it's very rare that that is the case, okay? We are still the same person, but just, you know, use, using a, a different language. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's have a look at some more uh, questions here. Okay. Um, Okay, okay. Alfonso has a question here. Let me read this question. Christian, hello from Mexico. I don't understand the different uses of get. I think that I'm able to speak English, 
But when people start to use get in all its variations, I think I'm not as good as I thought. Wow. Firstly, the, 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 the construction of your comment, okay, the, the quality of the, the grammar and the vocabulary in your comment is really high. So I'm guessing that probably your English is, is, uh, is, is, is quite good. So firstly, you should be super proud of that, right? Super proud. Um, and the second thing I need to tell you is um, about the verb get. <sighs> so, um, um, get is one of a very small selection of verbs in English that has many, many, many meanings. Many. Um, uh, I don't remember exactly right now, but... Uh, I think that in the in the the unabridged Oxford Dictionary, I think the word "get" is like thirty or forty pages of definitions. Okay, and even in a even in a small dictionary, uh, "get" you will find. I'm guessing it depends on the dictionary. Twenty, thirty, forty different definitions of the word get. Um, so, I, I think maybe part of your, um, your, your, your feeling uh, that, that, you know, your English is, is, is not good because you don't understand get, I think part of that feeling is because you have kind of a false idea about the word, okay? It's one word, but it doesn't have one meaning, okay? So you can really consider it, you can consider get to have hundreds of different meanings. So get is actually hundreds of different words. Please remember that. And it's important because um, like a very, a, a very um, good user of English, someone who has a, a, you know, a very good level of English, they will know maybe like 10,000 words. Okay. This, anyway, <laughs> counting words is hard, but let's say about 10,000 words. So if you imagine, if you imagine that the word get has a hundred or 200 different meanings, then you think, wow, actually get, get is a big percentage of all of the vocabulary that I know. Imagine out of 10,000 words, 200 of those words are different meanings of get. Wow, okay, so actually my English isn't bad because I don't know all of those meanings of get, right? And that's a very, very good user of English. Imagine if you are, you know, just a beginner and you only know 1,000 words. Well, if you only know 1,000 words and get has a hundred different meanings, that's 10% of your vocabulary for the word get, okay? So please, Keep your perspective about this, okay? Um, understanding get is, is it, understanding all of the meanings of get is not easy, okay, at all. Um, maybe just one little tip, just one little tip, okay? Um, obviously, get is used uh, very frequently in phrasal verbs. And get is also used very frequently in multi-word constructions or idioms, right? So um, my advice to you is to not focus so much on get because often get doesn't really carry a lot of meaning, okay? Often get um, is 
only in the sentence for uh, for grammar reasons, okay? I would try to focus more on all of the words after the get, okay? Because for example, if I'm listening, okay, I'm listening, da 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 da, -da get dressed, da 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 da, it doesn't matter the meaning of the word get, okay? We can just jump over it. The important thing, of course, is going to be focusing on dressed, right? That's where our real meaning is. Or, um, you know, if someone is shouting, get out! Again, it doesn't really matter about the, the, the understanding get. I know that someone is telling me to out, right? Run, okay? Um, or, uh, you know, any, maybe some of the idioms like, um, you know, uh, get, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't think of any idioms right now, but uh, my advice would be, you know, don't worry so much about, about um, uh, what the get means, okay? Um, uh, I hope that's, uh, I hope that's, that's, that's helpful to you a little bit. Um, uh, okay, let's, um, let's have a look and see. Okay, so Michelle, um, uh, Michelle is asking, so here's another question about past perfect and present perfect. Okay, so I think, um, uh, that's probably a great little uh, a great little question to uh, to answer because I know that many many students um, have uh, have problems with uh, perfect perfect uh, perfect aspect. Um, okay, so um, let me let me just put um, things. So we have uh, uh, well first first I want to start by just giving a definition for perfect, okay? Now, <laughs> again, again, probably many people have this idea in their minds that perfect somehow talks about actions that are continuing, okay? There's this big idea about Perfect represents continuing. Unfortunately, that is not true, okay? The, the easiest way to understand what the perfect aspect is, is that um, perfect basically just means before, okay? So when you see somebody using the present perfect, it literally means before now. Okay, it means before, okay, uh, before the present, okay, so before now. And so um, when you see somebody using uh, past perfect, then uh, that would mean that it was before, okay, so before, <laughs> before something in, in the past, okay. And Understanding that really simple concept is the key to understanding perfect tenses, okay? So I'm going to just do a super quick uh, drawing here. So um, if we have a timeline and this is now and this is the past and this is the future, okay? then um, basically anything, anything here, uh, we can use the present perfect. We can use the present perfect to talk about anything that happened in this period from past to now. Right, we can. Now, um, maybe some of you are thinking, wait, no, what, what the hell? No, that's not right. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, but, but yes, um, 
something again, and I'm sorry if I repeat myself about this a lot, but something really important to remember is that a big majority of the time in language, everything is allowed. Okay? Everything is allowed. The, the combination, okay, the combination of, um, of the little pieces of language, that combination and the imagination and the creativity of that, that combination, that is what makes language work. Okay? Please try and adopt, okay, try and take in this, this, this mentality that language is a process of creation, okay? Uh, and so, again, similar to, similar to what I said before about, you know, um, you should be careful when people tell you don't say that word. Okay, you should also be careful when people tell you that, um, you know, you can't use this grammar to do this. No normally you can, actually. Normally you can. Um, uh, so again, as a general rule, try to be skeptical. And um, uh, I'm going to just demonstrate a, a little difference about... Um, about about the difference between um, the, the the present perfect and the past simple. Okay, so um, maybe a question that you have is that um, if if I want to talk about something which happens here in this moment, then um, Christian, are you telling me, Christian, are you telling me that I can use uh, I can use two things. I can use past and I can use uh, perfect. Maybe I shouldn't say past. Uh, I can use the simple and I can use the perfect to talk about this. Um, yeah, the answer, the answer is absolutely yes. For example, I could say, um, I lived in Paris. Okay, good. Uh, and I have, sorry, my phone, <laughs> my phone is ringing. I apologize. Okay. Um, uh, you can say I lived in Paris or I have lived in Paris. Okay. And here we have present, uh, past simple. And here we have present perfect. And they both talk about something that happened in the past, okay? And they're both perfectly correct, okay? The difference, the difference is our perspective on, on that event, okay? And that's what the simple and the perfect do, okay? That's the big difference. So the, um, the, we know this is the simple, okay? And this is the perfect, okay? Um, so the difference basically between the two is that simple creates like a bubble around an event, okay? Creates a bubble. What it does is our perspective is that something happened in a little bubble of time and then we can look at that event like a little bubble, okay? Now, the, the, the perfect tense is, is different because it doesn't put that event inside a bubble. In fact, the perfect tense doesn't even tell us if that thing is finished or not, okay? For example, um, when you say I lived in Paris, 
We know, because the event is inside a little bubble in the past, we know that now they don't live in Paris. Okay. Um, let me just fix this with a comma. Okay, there we go. So when you say I lived in Paris, um, we know that now they don't live in Paris because the lived is started and finished. It's in a bubble and it's in the past. Okay. But um, with the second one, I have lived in Paris. We don't know. Okay. We don't know. Maybe, maybe they are continuing to live in Paris until today. Uh, or maybe they lived in Paris 20 years ago. We don't know. Okay. The difference is the perspective that I have when you, when you tell me that sentence. Okay. And I think this is something that you should really, really consider about language. Okay. Is that when you're creating language, really you are creating it for other people, right? When I speak, it depends if you're selfish or not, right? But, you know, when I'm speaking or writing, my objective should be to help the other person as much as possible to understand what I'm trying to say. That is, for me, the best philosophy of communication. Um, and so part of part of my decision about using the perfect tenses or the simple tenses, part of that decision will be, well, will it help you? Will it help you if I give you that perspective? Um, so, um, okay. <laughs> I think a drawing, another drawing would be helpful. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm just going to remove this, uh, this here. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to draw a beautiful stick man. Okay. So, um, and here at this moment is Paris. Okay. And when I'm, when I'm talking to you about Paris, what is the idea that I want? Maybe I should do bubbles. What is the idea that I want you to have in your mind? Do I want you to have the idea that it is like distant? That it is finished? Do I want you to have that idea? If, if I want you to have that idea that it's distant and finished, then I should use past simple. I lived in Paris. Cool. But maybe I don't, maybe I don't want to give you that idea. Because maybe when we are talking, actually, I want you to kind of feel like it's related uh, to now, right? I want you to feel like it's, it's part of the present, no? I don't want you, I don't want to give you the sensation that it's finished. I want it to be related to now, right? And so... If I want it to be related to now, I should use present perfect. I should say, um, I have lived in Paris. So again, it's about, about thinking about the other person and about, um, you know, about uh, maybe having respect for them understanding me. Um, and, and finally, finally, um, because you also asked about past perfect, Okay, so um, maybe I need to do it a bit longer, actually, a bit longer. Okay, so this is uh, past and this is now. Okay, so um, here I am. Uh, and again, I'm going to talk about Paris. 
because everyone loves Paris. Okay, talking about Paris. Um, now, if, if I want to give you the idea that this Paris um, started, okay, so we know, it's, it, uh, we know it started here, okay, but I don't, I don't want to give you the idea that it's finished, okay? Then um, I should use I should use present uh, present perfect. Okay, cool. Um, but what about what about if I don't actually want to relate it to now? Okay, because what about if after Paris, then um, I moved to Canada? Okay, so I moved to Paris. And then after that, I moved to Canada. And then now I live in uh, Spain. Okay. Now, maybe, maybe what I want to do is I don't want to relate it to now. I want to move it back into the past. So I want my little perspective to be here. Okay. Here I am imagining myself in Canada. So where am I? Well, now I'm in the past. Okay. I'm in the past. And remember, remember that perfect means before. Okay. So past perfect will be before something in the past. Okay. So here I am in the past. And if I want to talk about something before that, I want to talk about Paris, okay, then here I would use past perfect. So I could say, I lived in Canada, I had lived in Paris, okay, so um, I had lived, sorry, uh, I lived uh, in, oh, yeah, yeah. I lived in Canada. I had lived in Paris. Okay, so past before the past. Um, I really hope that um, that that little. <laughs> I hope that my beautiful artwork, no, um, really helped you to um, <laughs> to understand this, um, and and. You know, one thing I think that you should remember, okay, is that these are complicated concepts, actually. No, I shouldn't say that. I should say the concept is very simple, but the practice is, is, is complicated. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of practice, okay? And you shouldn't feel bad if you don't understand it the first time or the second time, or the tenth time, or the thousandth time, okay? It's hard. Um, and, you know, that's one of the problems with doing something like a workbook, okay? Is the workbook expects that when you finished chapter two, you understand. And wow, okay, now chapter three. Oh, I understand. Now I can go to chapter... No, it's like... Uh, like a circle. No, it's not even like a circle. <laughs> it's like a big, just a big mess of stuff just all, all happening at the same time. Okay, so please don't feel bad if, if you don't understand this today or tomorrow or next month. Okay, um, you can spend a lifetime trying to understand these things. Um, uh, okay, uh, guys, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, have an opportunity to, um, to answer all of your questions today. Um, uh, but I really hope that you found uh, some of this uh, interesting and especially useful, right? Um, it has been um, really amazing to see you all here. And, and I really want to say thanks 
for, for coming today. And um, as I said, um, I am planning to do more here on, on YouTube because really I missed you all. And um, so I'm sure that I will see you all again in class very, very soon. Thank you all for watching. Uh, my name is Christian. This is Kangaroo English and I'll see you in class. <laughs> Ciao, everybody.